Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn a little bit of math. Today is our lesson number 30. Today is our lesson number 30, and today we're going to talk about learning one's squares. You must know your squares. There are basic facts, there are some fundamental facts that you have to know by heart. If you're going to sit for any of these exams that you see here, whether you're preparing for ACT, SAT, or TEAS, or GMAT, or GRE, you have to know some basic facts. And one of the things that you have to know by heart, which saves a great deal of time in the exam, is knowing your squares by heart. Well, 1 through 10 is very straightforward, so we're not going to make a fuss about them. I hope that you know your one square is 1 through 10. Everybody knows them. They're very straightforward, as I said. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, then 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 7 squared, 64, 81, and 100. These you have to know by heart. If you don't know them, you should know them, you should memorize them, but we're not going to spend any time talking about the squares of 1 through 10. They, as I said, they are quite straightforward, quite, quite simple. 1, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Then 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. What we're going to talk about right now are the squares of 11 through 20. Let's begin. 11 squared, 12 squared, 13 squared, 14 squared, 15 squared. 11 squared is going to be 122. 12 square is 144. 13 square is 166. 14 squared is 198, and 15 squared, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's see what's going on, shall we? Let's, let's find out what's going on here. 11 squared. 11 squared, if we were to multiply 11, 11 by 11, if we were to multiply 11 by 11, what do you notice? I don't know what 11 squared is, but whatever the bloody thing is, has to end in a 1 times 1. The unit digit has to be 1 times 1. 1 times 1 is 1. It cannot be 122. Let's find out what it is, shall we? We want 11 11, so don't we? We want 11 11. 11 squared, whatever it is, it's got to be 10 11 plus 1 more 11. If we have 10 11 and another 11, that will give us 11 11. But 10 11 is very easy, we just have to stick a 0 at the end. So that's 110 plus 1 more 11. It turns out that it is not 122, it is in fact 121. How about 12 squared? The, here, the unit digit has to be 2 times 2, which it is. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's correct. We still have to check for it. Let's find out. 12 squared, 12 squared, whatever the bloody thing is, has to be the sum of 10 12s and 2 12s. 10 12, 10 12 we know are 240. Let's, let's do it on this side here. Let's continue our argument here. 10 12 we know are 240 and 2 12s are 24. And that represents that should represent the sum of 12 12s. 10 12s and 2 12s. 10 12s and 2 12s is 12 12s. So that's a 4, that's a 6, and that's a 2. Something has gone wrong drastically. What did I do wrong? Ah. 10 12s are not 240, 10 12s are 120. We're looking for 10 12s, not 20 12s. 10 12s are 120. You take a 12 and you stick a 0. 12 and you multiply by 10, you stick a 0. It's 144. That is correct. That was correct. How about 13 squared? Let's find out. 13 squared. And again, you should know these by heart. 13 squared. Same exact trick, 13 squared has to be same as 10 thirteens and 3 thirteens. And 3 thirteens. 10 thirteens are very easy, very easy, very straightforward. In my in my mind I just think of 10 thirteens, that's just 130. And 3 thirteens I can do in my mind, 3 thirteens are just 39. 3 thirteens are 39. 3 thirteens are very easy. 3 thirteens are 39. 9 and 3. Just add up 39 and 130, that should be 169 not 166, which makes sense because the unit digit has to be 3 times 3. 
Because if you multiply, if you multiply 13 by 13, the unit digit has to be 3 times 3, uh, 3 times 3, which is a 9, not a 6. It is 169. How about 14 squared? Same exact trick will apply, but I'm going to do 14 squared a little bit differently. 14 squared, if I had to do it out, has to be same as 140 plus 28 plus 28. I'm just going to add them up. 28 represents 214. This 28 represents 214. This is 214. This is 214. So that's 414. And this is 10 14. 10 14, 214, and 214 should be 14 14. 8 plus 86, carry 1. 8 and 9, 196. 196, not 198. It cannot be 198 because if you were to multiply 14 by 14, the unit digit has to be the product of 4 and 4. 4 times 4 is 16. It has to end in a 6. It can end in an 8. It is 196. And the way I remember it is that for some strange and inexplicable reason, for some strange and inexplicable reason, I don't have too much trouble remembering 13 squared. I don't have too much trouble remembering 13 squared. 13 squared, I can remember some, for, some, for some reason, is 169. So when I get to 14 squared, what I say to myself is that you take the 13 squared and you just reverse the digits. Instead of 6, 9, it is 9, 6. It's 196. Other way that you can think of 14 squared, other way that you can think of 14 squared, I don't want to make it too complicated, but other way you can think of 14 squared is this way. This is just a different way of looking at it. If you, you may not like it, you may hate it, you might think that I'm making too much fuss about it. You don't have to like it, but you have to understand it, and you have to have the intuitive, not just the mechanical understanding of it, but the intuitive understanding, intimate understanding of what the numbers are all about. 14 squared, of course, is the same as 7 times 2 squared. Wouldn't you say so? 7 times 2, 7 times 2 squared is same as 7 squared times 2 squared. Wouldn't you say so? 7 squared is 49. It's 49 times 4. Well, 49 times 4 should be same as, 49 times 4 should be same as 50 times 4. We don't have 50 fours, we have 49 fours. 50 times 4 is 200. You take away 1 4. If you have 50 fours and if you take away 1 4, you're left with 49 fours. 200 minus 4 is 196. 200 minus 4 is 196. What about 15 squared? Let's find out 15 squared. 15 squared is very straightforward. We know we know 10 15s. We know 10 15s are going to be 150. Don't we? 10 15 have to be 150. Therefore 5 15. Therefore 5 15. If 10 15 is 1, 10 15, if 10 15 is the 150, 5 15 would have to be half of 150. Half of 150 is 75. Just add them up. And that should represent 15, 15. Because we got 10 of them here and 5 of them there. 15, 15 has to be 225. Let's carry on then. Now we're going to do the 16. We're done with these. Sixteen squared. Now, do you know what sixteen squared is? Any idea? Sixteen squared. How do we go about finding out sixteen squared? Well, let's just do it out. Sixteen squared. Sixteen times sixteen. Six six are thirty-six. Carry three. Six one is six plus nine. Nine. Six plus three is nine. And then times one is just going to be sixteen. Fifteen carry one. Two fifty-six. Now the reason why I wanted to do 16 by itself is because it has certain significance. Not in the world, not in the world that existed even 30 years ago, or 50 years, or 100 years ago, but in today's world, in the language of computers, 16 squared has certain significance. What we are about to say is not going to be something earth-shattering, of course not, because nothing that goes on in these videos is earth-shattering. These are just nits bits they have to uh, tits bits, I, I think, believe is the idiom. Uh, pieces of uh, information that you have to know is uh, just interesting information, in interesting bits.
is 256. 16 can be written as 2 times 2 which is 4, 4 times 2 which is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. And that is being squared. That is 2 raised to 4. 2 raised to 4 is squared which is 2 raised to 8. Now you know what 2 raised to 8 represents in the language of computers? 2 raised to 8, 256 is 2 raised to 8. You know what that represents in the language of computers? Computer languages are binary. In the language of computer everything is binary. It's yes or no, on or off. This is the binary, 2 raised to 8. What does it represent? It represents a quarter of a a quarter of a kilobyte. A quarter of a kilobyte. 2 raised to 9 is half a kilobyte. And 2 raised to 10, 2 raised to 10 is what is known as a uh, 1 kilobyte. One kilobyte, technically speaking, strictly speaking, one kilobyte does not equal 1000. One kilobyte does not equal 1000. Strictly speaking, one kilobyte equals 256. 256 times 2, which is going to be 512, which is half a kilo. This is one quarter of a kilo. And you multiply it by 2 one more time, and you find it is 1024, which is 2 raised to 10, which is 1 kilobyte. So 2 raised to 16, or rather 16 squared, which is same as 2 raised to 8, is actually a quarter of a kilobyte. If you multiply it by 2 one more time, it becomes 2 raised to 9, half a kilobyte. 2 raised to 10 is 1 kilobyte. It has absolutely nothing to do at all to what we're talking about. We were simply interested in learning the squares. We just talked about all of this thing purely for the hell of it. Do you understand? Let's move on. 17, 18, 19. 17, 18, 19. You can pick up a little bit of speed now. Seventeen squared, eighteen squared, nineteen squared. If you're preparing for, if you're preparing for any of these tests, which is what I do, I'm I'm a, I'm a prep tutor, private prep tutor for these these tests that you see on the blackboard, ACT, SAT, TES, GMAT, GMAT, and GRE. If you're preparing for any of these tests, as I said before in the beginning of the video, knowing these squares by heart will save you a great deal of time in the exam on some questions. Having said that. Having said that, we need not worry, we, need, we needn't worry about knowing 17 squared, 18 squared and 19 squared because they do not appear very often. They appear once in a blue moon. We won't worry about what 17 squared is, what 18 squared is, what 19 squared is. We don't have to know them by heart. We simply have to understand, we simply need to understand the 17 squared, whatever, whatever the hell it is, it must, it must end in a... 7 times 7, 7 7s are 49, it must end in a 9. 18 squared, we don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it must end in a 8 times 8, 8 times 8 is 64, it must end in a 4. 19 squared must, must end in a 1. It should end in a 1 because 9 squares are 81. 9, 9 squared is 81. It must end in a 4. That's all we need to know. So if you're doing some work and if you need to quickly rec recognize a 19 square or a 17 square or 18 square among the numbers, simply doing the unit test will get you quite far. Simply knowing the fact that if you're dealing with 17 squared, the number that we're looking for must end in a 9. What about 20 squared? What about 20 squared? 20 squared is very easy, it's just 20 times 20, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, and then we got a 0 here, and we got a 0 here. It's just 400. What about 25 squared? What about 25 squared? You have to know 25 squared. 25 squared is very straightforward. 25 squared, we need, we need 25, 25. 25, 25 are going to be the same as 10, 25. Another 10 25s and then 5 25s. 10 25s 
the 225 is another 250 and 525 is half of 250 half of 250 is 125 if we add them all up that should represent 25 25 5 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 2 is 12 carry 1 is 625 25 square is 625 we are almost done to the to the end we have three more to go and that's it we're done that was 25 squared let's move on then how about 100 squared? 100 squared is 100 times 100. Again, 1 times 1 is just 1. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. 100 squared is exactly 10,000. Let's keep on going. We have 2 more to go. We have 2 more to go. 2 more squares that you should know by heart. How about 1,000 squared? 1,000 squared is simply 1,000 times 1,000. 1,000, 1,000 we learned a couple of days ago. And if you have not watched the video, look for the video where we talk about the millions and the billions and the trillions. Look for the heading. Look for the headings of millions, billions and trillions. We learned that if you have 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 times 1,000 is going to be 1. 1 times 1 is just 1. With 6 zeros, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. That's 1 million. 1,000 squared. It's 1 million. 1,000 squared is 1 million. Something that you have to know by heart without having to think about it even for 2 seconds. You should know instinctively that 1,000, 1,000 is a million. Let's do one last one. Let's do one last one. What about a million squared? A million times million. A million, million is simply 10 raised to 6 times 10 raised to 6. 10 raised to 6 times 10 raised to 6 is 10 raised to 12. And what is it? No, it's not a billion. A million times million is a trillion. As I said, if you have not watched the video that dealt with the concept of millions, billions, and trillions, make sure you go to, through these videos in proper sequence because I take it for granted that you already mastered the material that we covered in the previous video. So I'm looking at it as I'm talking here. Millions, billions and trillions. I don't know when we covered it. Just give me one second. I'm almost there. I'm up to 23 and it's not there. There we go. Day number 22. Day number 22. Today is day number 30. On day number 22 we learned our millions, billions and trillions. That's what that is. So know all of these squares by heart. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. I know.